Making a name for yourself in Hollywood is challenging in itself. Each year, thousands of people travel to Los Angeles with hopes that they too can add to the melting pot of great talent. Actress Golden Brooks would take her shot leaving her hometown of San Francisco, the Bay Area, to eventually the place where movies happen, Los Angeles. Over the years, Hollywood has offered few opportunities to black actors and actresses. This has led to movements like the Oscar So White hashtag on social media and Eddie Murphy's 1988 speech at the Oscars calling out the lack of blacks winning the prestigious awards in its history. But black people will not ride the caboose of society and we will not bring up the rear anymore. And I want you to recognize us. Not only has opportunities been a concern, but how blacks were represented when given a chance has been a part of that same conversation. In early 2000, Brooks, along with an all-star cast of black women, would help shift that conversation with the cult classic series, Girlfriends, which was the polar opposite of the stereotypes blacks had to overcome on film. Brooks' authentic portrayal of Maya Wilkes on the series would win over audiences and the impact on the show would display on how blacks can be represented on TV which is why Golden Brooks is unforgotten. Born on December 1st, 1970 in Fresno, California to Walter and Barbara Brooks, Brooks' life, according to her father, would start off as a fight as she was born premature and only three pounds. She has always been a fighter, no matter what she has done. She has always been very, very determined. I sure wouldn't want to go to war with her. When Brooks was just two years old, her father would move the family all the way to Nigeria for a teaching job. And after a brief moment in Africa, the family she knew would change. After the brief move to Lagos, Brooks' parents would end up getting a divorce, with Brooks staying with her mother and brother in San Francisco. Back at home with her mother is where Brooks would be groomed in having self-confidence and independence. I could go in any room and talk to anyone. Whether it's the President of the United States or a room of angry right-wing conservatives or Southern white people, I had that ability to blend in and assimilate. It was in high school that she would discover her passions of theater, gymnastics, figure skating, and her true love of dancing. I was a dancer in high school. I did ballet, modern, jazz. After high school, all I wanted to do was dance. While attending the University of California, Berkeley, she would continue her work on the theater stage by appearing in several plays like Natsuzaki Shanze's For Color Girls, Antoine Chacot's The Brute, and William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Upon leaving her university, she would then travel to New York to gain her master's in creative writing. And just a few years later, would return back west to continue theater work as an active member of the Robbie Theater Company. It wasn't until 1998, alongside Pam Guerrero on the Showtime cable sitcom Lynx, is when Brooks would get her first taste as a series regular on TV. Brooks played C.C. Jennings, an outspoken waiter and single mother. Despite getting several nominations, Lynx was canceled just after two seasons. My character was the only one people related to. Middle America wasn't ready for those ramifications. It scared people. Even though Lynx would end, Brooks' career was just getting started. And in 2000, she would land her biggest role yet. Behind the scenes, a then upcoming writer, Mara Brock Akil, would begin pitching a series idea that showed an honest depiction of the lives of four new age women for the show entitled Girlfriends. With the assistance of veteran actor Kelsey Grammer, Girlfriends would find a home and begin casting its leads. Tracy Ellis Ross, Jill Marie Jones, Persia White, and Golden Brooks would take on the new series. Girlfriends would tell the story of a group of black women with different lives faced with relationship and career challenges. The show would instantly become loved by UPN viewers. In a 2020 interview, Brooks would tell the show Rick and Sasha with special guest George Wilborn that despite being a cast full of women, they actually got along. For Brooks, the only drama would take place would be with her character, Maya. Maya would be known as Jones played Tracy Ellis Ross, office assistant on the series, who became love for her sharp tongue and take no shit attitude. All of us just want it to be good. I'm not going to lie, there were some subjects that I had to fight for. In terms of where Maya was going, I felt that Maya could have easily been that stereotypical character, but I was constantly fighting for her humanity. Now, outside of Maya's love life on the show that the audience loved between her and Darnell, Brooke's actual love life was also heating up. In 2008, the same year Girlfriends would end, Brooks would marry actor David Brian Woodside. And in 2009, one year later, the two would have a daughter together. Her marriage with Woodside would unfortunately come to an end in 2010. The ending of Girlfriends would be abrupt for many. A writer's strike, Jill Marie Jones' exit, and a network that was looking to go in a new direction would cause the series to end. 
For Brooks, this meant a new chapter. The chapter she would decide would be motherhood and her time in Hollywood would get put on hold. I had a baby. I took some time off just to focus on her. In 2011, in an attempt to get back in front of audiences, Brooks would first join Donald Faison's series, The Exes, for just one episode, followed by the film The Perfect Gift, starring American Idol winner Ruben Stutter that same year. It wasn't until 2012 where Brooks find herself with another recurring role on TV, this time for the series called Heart of Dixie as Ruby Jeffries. Fast forward to 2014, after years of being away from large audiences, Brooks would do something she's never done before by joining reality series Hollywood Divas on TV One. The series would feature Brooks with Paula Jai Parker, Contest Vaughn, Lisa Wu, Elise Neal, and Malika Hawk looking to spotlight the lives of black actresses. For Brooks, this wouldn't be her finest moments as the stereotype of black women she wanted to run away from would be on full display on the show. I don't think it's the best portrayal of us. I said I wanted to try everything. When asked if she would do it again during her interview with Rick and Sasha in 2020, she responded, absolutely not. For Brooks, her time on Hollywood Divas would end after eight episodes. And in 2015, Brooks would take her shot in the world of entrepreneurship by setting up to launch her own home items called the Gold Collection. The project, which mainly would sell candles and pillows, wouldn't take off. And by December of 2015, the final post was made on its Instagram account. Around this time, there were talks about Hollywood wanting to reboot one of its hit film franchises, Lethal Weapon. And in 2016, Fox would order Lethal Weapon, the series starring Damon Wayans and Clayne Crawford. The role would be one of her biggest moments on daytime TV. Everything was lining up for the former girlfriend star to show a new audience her skill set on camera until it was time for table reads. A table read, for those who don't know, is when a production has finalized their main cast and are now ready to test their chemistry. Unfortunately for Brooks, her new beginning with Lethal Weapon wouldn't happen as reports would begin to circulate that she had been fired from the show after the first table read and replaced by her former girlfriend's co-star actress, Keisha Sharp. Soon following her firing from Lethal Weapon, Brooks would end up posting what some felt was a subliminal message in response. She would share a mug on her Instagram that read, if your plans don't work out, don't worry, God has better ones. For Brooks, things would continue as she would land several roles on series like Ladies of the Law in 2018 and I Am the Night in 2019. That same year in 2019, she found herself reuniting with former TV friends for a very special episode of Blackish starring Tracy Ellis Ross. Brooks would reunite with Persia White, Jill Marie Jones, Reggie Hayes, and Tracy. Around this time, a girlfriend's movie would begin to circulate on social media, but Mara Brock Akil would end up getting in the forefront of the idea of a girlfriend's movie and confirm that a script idea did exist, but she had struggled over the years to get proper funding for the film. A girlfriend movies has yet to be announced. As far as now, according to Instagram, Brooks continues to raise her daughter while still pursuing her acting career. When it's all said and done, being a black actress in Hollywood already comes with obstacles. So making a name for yourself has to be a noteworthy accomplishment. The resilience of Golden Brooks to still push ahead even after her most loved performance is what sets her apart. Maya would represent the unrepresented and Golden Brooks would do the same in real life, which is why Golden Brooks is unforgotten.